Hello, everyone, and welcome to another webinar by the Anglo. We are really excited to have everybody with us today. Uh, and we are super excited to have with us Ismael Sombra. He is our a presenter for today. A little bit about him. He has been an English teacher for over 22 years at different institutions. He has a first degree and postgraduate degrees in English language teaching, and he has done some in-surface training courses. He's currently doing a master's on professional development for language education. During his career as a teacher and later as a teacher trainer, he has developed an interest in issues regarding teacher development and teaching pronunciation, which is why he is with us today to talk about developing natural pronunciation with connected speech. And he's going to give us some uh, very useful information about how to become familiar with changes that occur in natural spoken English. Thank you so much for being with us, Isma. Thank you, Emily. Thank you for such a nice presentation. And welcome everybody uh, to this uh, webinar regarding pronunciation. Um, this time we will be talking about issues regarding connected speech and why this is important in um, learning English. OK, uh, well, without further ado, let's start. Um, I want to show you. A little bit of a test first, OK? Um, I want to play a very short extract. It's just a phrase, a sentence. Uh, you're going to hear the sentence, and uh, if you can guess what the sentence is, write it in the chat box, and, and, and let's see if you can guess it correctly, okay? Are you ready? Okay, don't forget to write your answers in the chat box. Here we go, listen. They might have eaten it all. Okay, probably I caught you off guard, so I played it again so that you can hear it. They might have eaten it all. Okay, once again. They might have eaten it all. Okay, as much of a test. So if you could get the sentence, please write it in the chat so that we can see how much you made sense of the sentence. They might have eaten it all. A very challenging in sentence, right? Okay, well, never mind. Uh, I understand it was difficult. That was the purpose. I mean, just to see how connected issues of connected speech can affect your understanding of English and also your pronunciation. So the sentence you heard. They might have eaten it. They might have eaten it all. The sentence you heard is this one. Yeah. And the sounds for these uh, sentences, they might have eaten it all, right? Well, today we check why this is not the case and why this is um, not the way people pronounce it and why this is difficult for um, uh, foreign speakers, okay? So, um, but before I show you why this is difficult, I'll try to give you. Um, I don't know, probably a metaphor, OK? Um, this is an example in a book, and they say that in isolation, every word is like uh, cars in a, in a line. You know, you see the cars clearly waiting, and then you can see them separately. You can identify what happens with each word and in isolation. So you have they might have eaten it all. But that is not natural. That is not how people speak. What happens in real uh, life is a little bit more chaotic. It's a little bit more of a mess. So what happens in real life is pretty much like um, a, a massive collision of cars where the words are just so close together that sometimes it is difficult to distinguish uh, where one car finishes and where the other one starts. So an example of this is the sentence I, I show you before. If you see here, some of the, the sounds that were clear before, like have, eaten, eat, all, now they become something like this, listen. 
They might have eaten it all. They might have eaten it all. Okay. So what happens in connect? They might have eaten it all. Sorry, what happens in connect to the speech? They might have eaten it all. Is that sounds sometimes get so close that it's difficult, okay, to make sense of them when you hear them in in natural speaking, uh, or pronounced in a fast way. But it's important that you are aware. Connected speech is one of the sub skills in listening, and as a, as a sub skill, it can be learned. It can be practiced and it can be improved. So um, the first step is to, that you are aware of its existence so that you can later practice and well, eventually improve it. OK, in both uh, making sense of texts and also producing uh, the language in a natural way. Now let's practice a little bit. Then mainly uh, four issues a few more, but four issues in connected speech, and they have to do with the linking of sounds. You know, sometimes when sounds get connected, at times uh, there are sounds that are, are not there and that, that are inserted, or simply they disappear in connected speech. At times these sounds um, change, and uh, because of the time and, and time constraints, I don't think I will be able to check them all. So uh, today I will only focus on linking sounds and probably that could be, uh, I don't know, something you would like to see in other uh, webinars, like a saga of connected speech if you want to. At the end, if you're interested, probably you can um, ask Emily about other, other um, seasons okay of this connected speech webinar but let's focus on linking sounds and see what this is about okay well mainly in linking sounds we have three things that we are checking today one is what happens when we have consonant consonant in a sentence what happens when you have a consonant and a vowel and something that is called junction okay uh, I'll try to explain what this is, but these are the three the three main things we will check today. And not just explain, but as like we said, uh, it's important that you practice and that you develop. Remember, this is a skill. It takes a little bit of time, but eventually you can improve it. Now, let's begin with consonant and consonant. So I'm going to show you um, some word pairs and I want to pronounce them. All right. Um, what you need to do is listen to how I pronounce them, and then you need to identify what the pattern is between these sounds. Okay, let's begin with these two sounds. Okay, take a look. Now listen to me and check what happens when, when I pronounce these two words together. Rye plum. Rye plum. In our example, her thumb, her thumb. In our example, black cat, black cat. In our example, grab bill, grab bill. Grab bill. Next example. Play darts. Play darts. Okay, over to you. Now tell me, what's what happens with these sounds? What what do you notice? If you would like to write it in the in the chat box, that would be fantastic. What do you notice about the pronunciation of these um, pairs of words that have the same consonant at the end and at the beginning? Probably you can complete this sentence. The sound is slightly prolonged, but nevertheless pronounced only complete with, um, with one word maybe here. 
Richard wrote that both letters come together and Alejandro said that you combine. Exactly, yeah. So it sounds a little bit longer, but it's only pronounced once, right? Like placat, placat, play dart. So there are two D sounds, one at the beginning, one at the end, but um, you only pronounce it once. The sound is a little bit prolonged, but it, it is pronounced once only. So over to you. Now you practice a little bit with other examples. Um, I'm going to show you. So please at home, repeat, okay? Try, try to do it yourself. So we have these two sounds. First, I want to do it, and then you do it on your own. If Fred, if Fred, now do it, do it, do it at home. I'm looking at you and checking that you are doing it. Huh? Now practice with the other sounds. I'm not going to say them. Now you're going to do it at home, okay? This sound is check. Try saying it. Remember, you don't repeat both sounds only once. We thanks, very good, we thanks. I could hear you, yeah, good. Now, take a look at this one. Yes, ice skating, ice skating, perfect. And the last one, this sound is shh, check it. Yeah, you say, push surely, push surely. Okay, so this is what happens when we have mm, two consonants in both words, one at the end, the other one at the beginning. So we prolong it a, a little, but we only pronounce it once. So that's when we link some of the sounds. Let's see other examples. Um, oh, far reaches is another example, sorry. Um now we have another thing that is a consonant plus vowel. Um, well, some teachers call it catenation, but the important thing is that you link a consonant and a vowel. Let's see how it is explained. So when a word ends in a consonant sound and the next word begins with a vowel sound, they can be linked. I'll show you some examples. Okay, in all these examples, you, you see that, right? Um, one, one word finishes with a consonant, but the next word begins with a vowel sound. Yes, um, the same happens in all five examples. So let's see how this is pronounced. Unit one, seven. Greek alphabet, modern email, unit one, eight. New idea, computer information, 14th century English, unit one, nine. Okay, now I'll tell you what happens. Mm, a good recommendation to link the sounds is uh, to link first the consonant of the last word with the with the with the second word. In this case, for example, you say alphabet. Uh -huh. Alphabet. Check check how they do it. Alphabet. Alphabet. Greek alphabet. You see. So alphabet, then we use the last consonant, alphabet, and then we say it all together, Greek alphabet, Greek alphabet. Now practice with the others, okay? We have more examples. Email, email, modern email. Mm -hmm. Could you do it? 
Yes, we need to add the last consonant to the word, second word and then try to link it. How do you think it may happen with the new the next example? New idea. Yeah, we have to say idea, right? Listen to that. Idea. Idea. New idea. Information. Information. Computer information. English. English. 14th century English. Unit 1, 7. OK, you see how these are linked. So um, it's interesting to see how we can do it and sound more natural. Greek alphabet, modern email, new idea, computer information, century English. OK, so this is what happens with consonant plus vowel. Now, well, these are sentences, but I mean words, personal words, but let me see it one. in context, OK? Now, I want to give you a bit of a challenge. I know this is a big challenge, OK? I want to show you some phrases in which the, con the connected speech issue is happening. I mean, the linking is happening. You need to guess what they say. Don't worry if you don't guess them, OK? It's a big, it's a big challenge, I know. Take a look at these six phrases. Remember, they are not words. They are sounds and they are phrases. One characteristic is that, is that they are linked. Their sounds are linked, OK? Probably because there is a consonant and consonant or because there is a consonant and a vowel. If you take the challenge, if you decide to take the challenge, please write the words in the chat box. Probably you can guess one or two. That's OK. Don't don't lose heart. OK, it's perfectly OK. It's difficult to see this without a context, but let's see if just by looking you can guess. Very difficult. Let me give you a clue. What if I told you these phrases come in a fun conversation? Does that help? Not much. What if I gave you the context in which they are said? Take a look at the conversation. And you guess now? Got some guesses this month? Yes, can you share with some of them? Mm. Sure. Um, we have for number one, Elizabeth says Oasis. Roberto says, this is, Maribel agrees, uh, this is, several this is, um, several oasis. Number two, we have, can I speak? Uh, can I speak to? Yeah. Leonardo agrees. Uh, and for the third one, and when Invitado says, she's in the, at the, several people are agreeing with those. Yes. Very good, excellent. Well, now listen to the um, part of the conversation, okay, in which these uh, phrases are are mentioned, okay? Check if you're right. Let's listen to that. Unit five, tape script three. Hello, this is Adam. Can I speak to Jess, please? I'm afraid she's in the shower at the moment. I'll ask if she'll call you back as soon as she gets out, OK? Mm, OK. If she... OK. So you're right. The first one, this is. Mm -hmm. This is. Uh, the second one, can I speak to? Mm -hmm. Can I speak to? The third, she's in the shower at the moment. She's in the shower at the moment. You see the linking, no? Shower at... Shower at the moment. I'll ask if. I will ask if. I'll ask if. Call you back as soon as. Back as soon as. Back as soon as. She'll call you back as soon as she. 
que out as soon as she gets out, okay? Gets out, okay? Gets out, okay? Now, I want you to practice the sounds, I'm sorry, the phrases in isolation without the um, conversation, all right? So re re try to repeat on your own. This is, this is, can I speak to? Can I speak to? She's in the shower. That she, sorry, she, she's in the shower at the moment, or she's in the shower at the. She's in the shower at the. I'll ask if. I'll ask if. Back as soon as. Back as soon as. Get sound okay. Get sound okay. Now practice saying the conversation on your own in context. Hello, this is Adam. Uh, listen to the conversation and try to follow. But remember, don't think of the uh, parts of the conversation as individual words. Think of them as phrases, okay? Think, remember the, the accident and the car accident and how the words are together. So try to pronounce them as they come. Listen and check. Unit five, tape script three. Hello, this is Adam. Can I speak to Jess, please? I'm afraid she's in the shower at the moment. I'll ask if she'll call you back as soon as she gets out, okay? Mm, okay, if she gets out in a few minutes, but I'm going out in a quarter of an hour. I'll be back at about eight o'clock. Shall I try again then? Okay. How did it go? How did you feel? Did you feel you were spe speaking faster? Tell us, okay? Did that help you? Elizabeth says thanks. <laughs> so I'm thinking that that was really helpful, Isma. Okay. I have to say it was very interesting for you to um, give us some examples that start in the middle of a sentence. So you really uh, get practice uh, with with the sounds and it's you're not focusing on the meaning. You're really isolating those sounds. I like it. Yeah, so it's only the sounds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you want to check the whole conversation, you we can see it here. OK, um, now you can see the words. Yes, this is this is. But as you can see, there are there is some um, something below the words, which means that there is the linking. If you see, for example, this is. Is what we said before. Sometimes we have a consonant and a vowel and what happens is that we link them. This is uh, it happens that it it also links with Adam because we have again a consonant and a vowel. So sometimes we have to say, this is Adam. This is Adam. Okay, you can see other examples like, can I speak to Jess, please? So um, take a look at the other linkings, right? And listen to how they are pronounced and you will see that they are not pronouncing isolated words because if they were pronouncing words like that they would sound like Alexa probably all right mm, that's now that's not how we, we would like to to speak check and see how this is natural it's, it's a natural conversation it's a short conversation but see how it occurs listen and check unit five tape script three Hello, this is Adam. Can I speak to Jess, please? I'm afraid she's in the shower at the moment. I'll ask if she'll call you back as soon as she gets out, OK? Mm, OK. If she gets out in a few minutes, but I'm going out in a quarter of an hour. I'll be back at about eight o'clock. Shall I try again then? I think she's going out later on. Oh, just a minute. I think she's coming out of the shower now. Jess, it's Adam on the phone. Thanks, I'll answer it upstairs. Adam, hello, how are you? 
Hey, well, that's the real conversation. I want to play it just again because I want to give you another challenge after this one, okay? Just listen and check again. Unit 5, tape script 3. Hello, this is Adam. Can I speak to Jess, please? I'm afraid... Sorry. I'm afraid she's in the shower at the moment. I'll ask if she'll call you back as soon as she gets out, okay? Mm, okay. If she gets out in a few minutes, but I'm going out in a quarter of an hour. I'll be back at about eight o'clock. Shall I try again then? I think she's going out later on. Oh, just a minute. I think she's coming out of the shower now. Jess, it's Adam on the phone. Thanks. I'll answer it upstairs. Adam, hello. How are you? Okay, and here comes the challenge. Now, I want to show you some extracts from the phone conversation. All right. What you have here in numbers one to four is um, some of the words, but in the car accident, remember? So, please, in the chat box, write the number of the phrase and, and write this in plain English. Okay, what do you think number one says? I, I'm giving you the context, a little bit of context so that it helps you. Yes, no, while we're waiting for people to write their answers, I do want to share a question with you. Sonia asks if there's a limit of words that can be linked together. No, I don't think so. I, I think it's more about um, these combinations no, of uh, consonant plus uh, vowel or consonant, consonant. No, there is no limit. As you could see, sometimes there are very big phrases like number three. <laughs> That's a very big one. What do you think that that says in number three? It said back at about eight o'clock. <laughs> back at about eight o'clock. Back at about eight o'clock. And you see, even the the speech recognizer in this presentation finds it. You see, back at about eight o'clock. You see, and it identifies. Even though you have connected speech there, speech recognizers are, are able to identify it. So number three should be back at about eight o'clock. What about number one, two, and four? We have some answers there. Yvonne, Maite, Carla, Adriana uh, are guessing for number one, get out in a. Get sound Very in. good. Get sound, in a, get sound in a few minutes. No? Good. And, uh, Adriana says uh, for number two, going out in a quarter of an hour. Very good. Going out in a quarter of an hour. Yeah. And number four. Number four we have from Valeria, I'll answer upstairs. Very good. I'll answer it upstairs. I'll answer it upstairs. Perfect. You did very well. You see how skill can be developed and how you can do it. <laughs> well, there's another issue that we said we, we were going to discuss that is called juncture. What is juncture? Uh, this is a source of confusion very often because, um, you know, in English there are like homophones, like words that sound the same, even though they are spelled differently. But that doesn't just happen at the level of words. It happens at the level of phrases or sentences. And, and this is an issue sometimes. Well, juncture is when two phrases sound exactly the same, but have different meanings. Sometimes people play with this, and it says sometimes they use uh, they use it in advertising and things like that. This is an example. It says, "Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream." So if you see ice cream in ice cream, um, spelled differently, there are two different ideas, yet they are pronounced the same. Ice cream ice cream. So you'll see some other examples of this uh, juncture. I want you to pay attention to them, OK? That's one example.
And now listen to how they are pronounced. Check it. First, you will you will hear the ones on the right on the left hand, and then you will hear the ones on the right hand. Never mind because they are pronounced exactly the same. Check it. B eighty five. Pet center. Pet center. Stop taking. Stop taking. Ice cream. Ice cream. No name. No name. Call Danny. Call Danny. Clock stops. Clock stops. Mr. Knight. Okay. <laughs> you feel confused? Yeah, I, me too. So, <laughs> but now let's practice a little bit. This is this is what happens. This is what juncture is. Now let's have a little bit of practice so that you, the you can avoid these difficult situations. Um, if you see here, we have a, lo a lot more examples of juncture. You have one of the uh, phrases, but you don't have the other one. So I'm going to pronounce it and you will have to guess what the other pair of words is. For example, in number one, there is a, and there is a gap and then you have able and then you have. Fail and table, which sounds fail table. Fail table. What do you think the other pair of words may be? Difficult. Well, let's try this one as an example. Since yeah, the okay. past form of the verb feel felt table. Well, the rest is just for you, okay? Now, take a look at number two. Known you. Known you. What could be the other phrase? Write in the chat box if you know, if you can guess. No, you. No, it's difficult, right? No, new. Yeah, no, new. Now, cook steak. Cook steak. What do you think about this one? Cook steak. No. What about that? Cook steak. Cook steak. Okay, let's see if we can get better at number four. Seen you. Seen you. What do you think that is? Seen you. Mm -hmm. Face told. Face told. What do you think about that one? Right in the chat if you can guess. We've got some good guesses here, Isma. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Face told. Very good. Face told. What about six, seven? Can you guess them on your own? Right. Let's check some of the answers. In ocean. Mm -hmm. In ocean. Stop turning, stop turning, or stop earning, stop turning. Escape terror. Mm -hmm. What about number nine? Men cheer, men cheer. And finally, learn chess, learn chess, or learn chess, right? Well, these issues of um, connected speech very often cause problems when, um, especially in listening uh, exams or in real situations, it can be very confusing. Um, for example, phrases like in a minute may sound like in a minute. You know? So we have to be aware of this because if what they are saying doesn't make sense, probably is because of this issue, all right? 
So see some examples of uh, nonsense. <laughs> For example, a uh, person wrote, it's no good, I can fix it. That's what they heard. Now, try to guess why the person wrote it's no good if it doesn't make sense. Well, the answer is there, right? It's no good. <laughs> it's no good, I can fix it. That's what makes sense, right? Mm, take a look at the other examples. Why do you think someone brought known uses good news, as they say? What do you think the phrase may be? Someone believes that it might mean none. none. Yeah. But Ivan says no news is good news. Exactly, that's the expression. No news is good news, but no news is good news sounds like no news, no news is good news. So it sounds the same. What about two? What happens? What is the problem with two? Have you found Joe parents? <laughs> what about that one? Mm -hmm. Found your parents. Very good. Did you guess the others? The others? Number three, four. Never heard you lie before. Mm, what's wrong with that? <laughs> what do you think the person said? I never heard you lie. <laughs> I never heard you lie. Yeah. Well, the same with four. I think I felt rain. Let's go inside. I felt rain. Felt rain. Okay, I felt rain. Mm -hmm. Number five. Mm -hmm. The ships take. The ships take uh, across the river. The cars across the river. Mm -hmm. They join us for dinner. And we stop choosing, stop choosing the typewriter, stop choosing the, try, the typewriter. That's how it sounds in connected speech, right? In isolation, they sound differently, but in connected speech, mm, it's like what happens with the cars, remember? All right, how can we practice on our own? Well, we have a few uh, digital tools you can use and I would like to recommend. Let me just share um, my screen so that you can see um, what these are about. Um, I like this because um, it's, it's pretty much what we did today. Um, it's called Tube Quizzard, right? Um, I'll, I'll share uh, all, the, all the links in a minute with you. But in, in Tube Quizzard, you can work on different things. You can work on grammar or pronunciation. And you see it has different levels, A1, A2, B1, B2, etc. If you select, for example, pronunciation for listeners, and then um, each of the videos has a short description of what this is about. For example, in this one, they talk about disappearing sounds. This is not something we checked today, but um, probably something of another connected speech session. Um, what is interesting about this one is that um, you, you can practice uh, these little things uh, with any, basically with any video. This is aimed at uh, level B1 and B2, and the characteristic of this one is this American pronunciation. You can select other varieties of English. It's really up to you on what would you like to practice. Let me just show you an example. This video is about a girl who's making a robot that uh, is going to fit her. <laughs> and what you can do, what makes it easy, is that you can just click on the gap and then we play that part of the uh, video where the answer is here. Help me, help me answer it, please. We can't hear it. It's not... you, you can hear? Sorry, I, I forgot okay. to <laughs> That's share okay. this. Um, let me try again. It has like this weird bug where I have to slam it for it to actually start. I 3D printed all these parts. 
because you can't get a claw that needs to pick up soup just like that. Mm -hmm. That's like a weird bug where I have to slam it for it to actually start. I 3D printed all these parts because you can't get a claw that needs to... Mm -hmm. That was like this weird bug where I have to slam it for it to actually start. I 3D printed all these parts because you can't get a claw that needs to pick up soup. So help me complete this one. That was like this weird bug where I have to... What do you think that is? That was like this weird bug where I have to slam it for it to actually start. I 3D printed all these parts because you can't get a claw that needs to pick up soup just like that. We have, we have a number of answers. We have Only tents, a little bit of fine tuning. Just, just a little get. bit. Yeah, I can get and you can check your answers here. And it says, well done, very good. So this is a good way to practice. And there are several um, YouTube videos that you can use here. They are, they are already prepared for you to start Only working. And mm, then you can jump so messy. any moment you want. Which is nice. And um, another uh, interesting um, application is play phrase me and they find expressions in, in movies, for example. Get over there, big boy. Come on. <laughs> Put your hand up. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Come on. Put your hands up, Benito. Put your hands up. You see, this is pronounced more like "put your hands up." Put your hands up. So this can help you practice with, um, you know, chunks and links. So I, I find this very interesting. I hope you like them. Um, uh, as uh, we finish this session, I'll try to share uh, these links with you so that you can work on your own. Um, I don't know if at this point you may have some questions in particular. So probably you would like to tell uh, Emily if you would like to this story to continue with the other issues of connected speech, like sounds that are inserted or eliminated or changed in connected speech, please let her know if that is the case. So uh, for me, this is all. Thank you so much uh, for attending and I'll be here if, if there is something else you may need. Okay.